For two days, the Sudan armed forces have been bombarding the capital from the air and with artillery. The first attempt in more than a year to push the rapid support force militia out of Khartoum. Soldiers have started to celebrate, but journalists close to the RSF say their joy is premature, as the militia is well dug in and won't be easily dislodged. This is Khartoum Hospital, ear, nose and throat department, the cancer hospital, and as you can see, the city is calm. And behind me, you can see the Faculty of Medicine. We can give you an idea of what happened inside. Some buildings were damaged due to airstrikes and battles. But, in general, central Khartoum is empty and calm. The SAF control Omdurman, while the RSF control Khartoum and Khartoum North. In the last two days, the army claims to have retaken two bridges over the Nile, the Hal Fire Bridge connecting Omdurman to Khartoum North and the White Nile Bridge linking Khartoum to Omdurman. In New York, a few pro-army Sudanese greeted the army chief as he prepared to address the UN General Assembly. He says there'll be no further peace talks until the RSF withdraws from territory it occupies, in other words, until it surrenders. We will not allow a ceasefire without a withdrawal. We refuse any ceasefire, whether it be in Al Fashir or Khartoum, or in any other place. The forces have to withdraw from the homes of our citizens, from the roads and the areas that they have occupied. Today he met the Russian foreign minister. After initially backing the RSF, Russia has changed sides, possibly in exchange for access to a naval base. In a deal that would require Russian approval, Algeria has reportedly offered Sudan 31 of its old MiG-29 fighter jets as Russia updates the Algerian fleet. The head of the RSF, General Dagolo, has been reduced to tweeting out an address to the UN General Assembly in which he claimed he was ready to talk peace, presumably because he fears the military and diplomatic tide may be turning against him. None of this helps the victims of the war in Sudan. In South Kordofan, women displaced by the conflict boil up leaves to feed their children. They fled the war only to find hunger, and not everyone made it. I'm scared of being here because I don't know if I will live or die. I just surrender to God. I might die like the others did on the road. Both sides use food as a weapon. The Sudan Armed Forces frequently prevents aid convoys from travelling to stop food ending up in the hands of the RSF. As a result, millions of Sudanese are starving. Rhoda Tia's son Khalil fell on their long journey to what she hoped would be safety. The staff at Karonko Hospital couldn't save him. One more victim of a futile war between cruel generals who care nothing for the Sudanese people, only for power.